Our next question, a very popular question, uh, river capture, stream piracy, gemophology. Okay. But uh, what I like what I've seen in front of me, this examiner really went out of his way, tried to catch you out. You know, he basically, he tried to, he pulled one, he tried to pull one over you, over you because he tried to create confusion over here with river capture. Okay. But I'm going to show you now where the confusion comes in. Because when we look at river capture or stream piracy, I prefer stream piracy because everyone knows what's a pirate, okay? Oh, actually, South Africans should know what's capture because we experience so much state capture of politics and whatnot. But let's just stick to stream piracy. What does a pirate do? Steals from another one, okay? Pirate steals from another one. Now, obviously, if we look at the term river capture is when one river steals water from another river. Okay, but there's confusion over here, and I like what this examiner did, you know, actually kudos to him, because now he created some confusion over here, and last year's paper, he gave us three rivers, there's one, there's two, and there's three, okay, one, two, and three, so as you can see, I want to highlight just the keys. The head with erosion, pay attention where it is. It's situated over here. Just over there. Okay. The stream channels. This is the solid black lines. Okay, that's been indicated over here. And direction of flow. Now, great tools. He, the examiner tried to trick us over here because he gave us so many different streams, which is normal. But when we look at stream piracy, we only focus on two, on the captive and the captured. So one is stealing water from the other one. One stream on this figure doesn't play any role in this question. So let's go and have a look at that. And I'm quickly going to eliminate this stream over here. Oops, wrong color pen. It's not going to work. You won't be able to see it. Let's just erase that river over there. Okay. So what I'm seeing over here, I'm seeing one river. Let's just call this river. I'm going to call the rivers river A and river B. Okay, first of all, this is river A. Let's call this river A. Okay, I'm still going to call this river A. And then this stream over here, let's use blue just as long as this is on white. This is river B. I want you to completely forget about the river that I've crossed out over here. Okay. So what I'm going to explain to you is either A is stealing water from B or B is stealing water from A. But before I'm going to explain to you, I need to tell you why this happens. Why does a river steal water from the other river? Okay. And let me just write it down there. When we look at stream piracy, river capture, it happens because of three things. Okay. Simple reason why one river steals water from another river is because it's faster, it's got more erosive capability, maybe because of rejuvenation. Now we've learned about rejuvenation. What's rejuvenation? The process when the river regain energy, okay? It might be because of isostatic uplift. It might be because we're adding more volume of water. So river capture takes place, right? When rejuvenation takes place. Okay. 
more energy, more energy, and yes, I'm going to just leave it over there. So what we have over here is basically a synoptic point of view. So we got river capture from above, bird's eye view. I just want to give you a cross-sectional point of view of river capture. And I want to do it, we call it a transverse profile. What's a transverse profile? We've learned about this uh, regarding our rivers from one riverbed to the other side. Now, I'm just going to give you roughly a diagram. Okay, so basically what happens, I've mentioned we got river A and river B. Okay, there's river A. I'll explain that to you now. Just hang on, my mistake, my mistake. Let me just redo this quickly. Okay, I just want to quickly remember river, which one is stealing water from which one, and I did. So this is the scenario we're dealing with. Okay, bear in mind. This is river A. Okay, this is the river bed, so this is river A. Okay, and let me just quickly widen river B. This is river B. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't write with blue pen because you won't be able to see it. But this is river B. Okay. Now, first of all, grade 12s, very importantly, what separates one drainage basin from another? Okay. What separates one drainage basin from another? When we discuss drainage basins, there's a lot of key concepts that you need to remember. Uh, the mouth, the uh, interfluve, tributaries, okay? The source of the river, confluence. What separates one uh, watershed from another? It's known as a watershed. Okay, so still, while I'm dealing over here, the watersheds separate A from B. Now, what do you pay? Pay attention to a couple of details of this diagram that I've drawn. First of all, which river has more water, A or B? B. Okay, more volume. Now, more volume means more erosional capabilities. I'm just going to write there more erosion. Okay. Now, very importantly as well, if you look at river A as river B, which one is at a lower altitude? B. Great, Charles. How do water flow? From a high laying area to a low laying area. Okay, simple as that. The guys called it Newton, the law of gravity. Okay, water can't flow from a low laying area to a high laying area. If you do see it, please let me know. I would love to go and see it. Okay, but it's impossible. So this gives River B an opportunity to be more powerful because it's at a lower altitude. And then we can also mention it might be because of the underlying rock. Now, what does underlying rock got to do with it? Okay. It might be because the rock is much softer, the underlying rock. We can say it's, it's permeable. Okay. It's permeable. Whereas River A, the rock is impermeable. It doesn't allow to be infiltrated. So we can say at B, it can erode much easier than at A. And the last reason that we can mention, area B is in a high rainfall area. But now you're asking me, how come rain, River A and B are close together? But we, remember, we're talking about the watershed. We're talking about a mountain between two drainage basins. So they might experience complete different types of rainfall areas, fall in two different types of rainfall areas. Now imagine this, so river B has got more volume of water, so it mo means more erosional capabilities, so it's a bloody bad ass river, right? It's got more volume, so it's much faster flowing, it's at a lower altitude, 
Okay. We're saying the underlying rock might be softer and it experienced more rainfall. So what's going to happen with River B? It's going to start a road into the watershed. And what do we call this erosion? We call it headward erosion. Or we call it backward erosion. Okay. So as it cuts back into the watershed, it's known as headward and backward erosion. Eventually, it will cut straight through to River A. And what's going to happen to all the water of River A? It's going to join River B. It's just going to make it so much simpler. Because all the erosional capabilities is eroded through to River A. And it's faster flowing, and it's at a higher altitude, so it flows smoothly into River B. Now, this is a transverse profile, a side profile, what's happening on our figure 1.5. Okay, so let me quickly explain this to you. I'm going to stick with River A, forget about that top section. That's just the examiner tried to play a trick on us. He's not that clever. Anyway, so remember, I'm just going to mention, let me just wipe everything off. I'm going to stick to my river A and river B. Okay. So there's river A, there's river B. There's river A, there's river B. So what has happened? As you can see, River B, what did we say in the bottom? As you can see, they already mentioned, there's the watershed. This is the watershed. Yeah. We already see headward erosion taking place. Do you see that? There's it. Okay. Now, River A is flowing. There's River B. What did we say about River B? Higher volume of water, higher rainfall, lower altitude. So what happens? You can see the headward erosion taking place. And all of a sudden, it is cut straight through to River A. And look what happened. Stole the water. Okay. Now, let me draw this diagram on the bottom. So this is the scenario. There was River A. And there was River B. Okay. Now, eventually what has happened? River B went straight through to River A because River B, can you remember, more volume, more erosion, lower altitude, underlying rock, more ero can easily be eroded to higher rainfall. And what happened? River A flows into River B. Okay. Now, very importantly, this is River A, this is River B. What happens over here? We give this where this 90 degree bend takes place. I want to complete my diagram. When this 90 degree bend takes place, we call it the elbow of capture. Now, where the river is going to dry up, right? We're going to call it the wind gap. Because as you see, the river is not going to continue anymore because it's bending because of the headwood erosion that took place over here. So, what do we call this? The stream. Look how clever I was by drawing a dotted line. What does a dotted line mean? non perennial river. Okay. Now, we can't call it non perennial rivers. It's what you call it. Permanent, and we call it periodic. So it's a periodic river because it doesn't get rain water all the time. So it will probably dry up during dry season. So what do we call this? We call this the misfit stream. And the stream that stole all the water, this stream B, is known as the captor stream. So B was the bloody pirate, it was the one stealing all the water from A. Why? Because it had greater volume of water, might be in a high rainfall area, lower altitude, and obviously more erosional capabilities, softer rock that it flows 
on top of. Okay, as you can see, and that's all the important concepts that you need to know. The wind cap, the captor stream, the elbow of captor, and the misfit stream. Okay, now, that's river capture explained to you, as you can see. Okay, this is the diagram. Like I said to you, forget about that one over there. But let's just quickly go and have a look at the questions regarding river capture. 1.5.1, the question states, define the term river capture. Okay, it's when one river, when one river captures the headwaters of another river. Yeah. In essence, is when one more energetic river steals water from a less energetic water. Okay, just mention when you define this concept that you have to mention that, that there's a river stronger. Okay, the one river is stronger than the other one. Okay, that's our first answer. Second answer, if we quickly have a look at it. Describe the erosion associated with the process of river capture in sketch A. Now, the answer has been given to you. As you can see, just want to clean up a little bit over here. There's the answer. It's been given to you. Diagram A. Okay. It's there. And the correct answer is head with erosion. Or, I've mentioned, it's also known as backward erosion. Okay. Let's quickly look at question number three. Identify the features L and M that result from the river capture. If we just have a look at the diagram, L and M. Okay. Let me once again just clean over here. Okay. I've shown you. This is the 90 degree angle where L is. What do we call that? Yeah. Elbow. Of capture. And the area where the river dries up is known M, known as the wind gap. Okay. Question 1.5.4. Uh, make the terms, match the terms cap the stream and misfit stream to streams J and K in diagram B. Okay, let's quickly have a look at it. There's J and there's K. Let's just quickly clean our diagram again. So which one stole the water from which? There's stream J and there's stream K. So K is definitely going to be the captor. I'm going to write it over there. Stream K is the captor because it stole the water. And stream J is going to be the misfit stream. Okay, that answers question 1.5.4. Now if we quickly look at point 1.5.5, what is a watershed? I've mentioned to you. When I gave you a transverse profile, what's a watershed? It's a high-laying area separating two drainage basins. Okay, let's just write it down. Watershed, it's a high-laying area Separating two drainage basins. Okay. Question 1.5.5. How can the process of river capture cause the watershed to change its position? 
Uh, I've mentioned to you, if you quickly look at this diagram that I've drawn, how does this happen? It's this, how does the water jet changes its position? Because what do we experience? We experience headward erosion and backward erosion. So what happens? What's happening with the watershed over here? It's been lowered. Okay. That's what's taking place. The watershed has been lowered vertically, okay, because of the erosion capabilities taking place. Our next question, and that's also our last question. What can the local farming community around Stream J do to continue with their daily activities after river capture has taken place? Now keep in mind, the farming community at J is a bit of a trouble. Why? Because Stream K has just stolen all their water. Okay, unfortunately. So now think of the farming community who was farming on the riverbeds of Stream J. So what can they basically do? And there's a couple of things that they can do, and I just want to write them down over here. It's they so the problem is the need to migrate, okay, with livestock. What else they can do is migrate with the livestock and build dams to store water. 